the first of the Jacksons to arrive in Barbados in the 30s, 1630s, and having lost a lot of their wealth in the Civil War, came to Barbados to create slavery in order to regain some of the wealth they had lost in the Civil War in Britain. And it was Drax who was one of the leading architects of slavery. He was one of the he was one of the leading designers of slavery. You know, Drax was an architect of the idea that black people were not human beings. The Draxes are not just property owners. They're not just people who own property and slaves and so on. They were the designers, they were the architects. It came out of the imagination of people like Peter Drax. But I guess the, the question that follows, Hillary, is what's the consequence now? Should there be some sort of economic reckoning? Because that would have made vast amounts of money. It would have been economically viable because they were using slaves rather than paying a fair wage. And that wealth has resided in the family for centuries. That point is very clear. I guess the question always, and maybe this is a unique situation because the wealth has remained in one identical family with one identical institution, one plantation and more, as you've been saying. What's the consequence now, though? Is there a, is there a figure you can put on it? Is that, is that what, we, well, what we should be doing? We find that the narrative you have just given to be totally unacceptable, and it's a distortion. This is why. When the Drax family was a part of that legislating that Black people were not human beings, the psychological, cultural, epistemological consequences that, of that denial of your humanity, and then the enforcing of that for all of these centuries, that is the greatest crime that has ever been committed. The greatest crime that has ever been committed is to deny people their humanity, their right to a human identity, and to use your legal and military power to enforce that for centuries. When you try to reduce this conversation to a matter of how much money they made and how much wealth they have. Let me tell you, that is a part of the conversation, but that is not the center of the conversation. The center of the conversation is a family that use its legal and military power within the context of the British Empire to degrade 600,000 people for 200 years in the first instance and turning Barbados into a tomb. I want you to understand that 600,000 Africans were brought into Barbados, okay? 600,000 Africans were imported into the Barbados plantations. The population of Barbados today is 280,000. Do you know what was the population at emancipation? 83,000. How do you reduce 600,000 people after 200 years to 83,000? In other words, less than 20% of the Africans who were enslaved by people like the Drax family, less than 20% of them survive. In other words, slavery in Barbados was genocide. Now, you have to understand the full context of this in which you wish to insert Mr. Drax into that legacy of the 200 years of free labor from people who were defined as not human but property. And then he collected, the Drax family collected their compensation money at emancipation because the Drax family fought tooth and nail against emancipation. They were in the vanguard of the struggle to block the emancipation legislation. And the Drax family in the 1820s were out there on the frontier fighting tooth and nail to block the emancipation legislation. Then they collected the 4,000 pounds, which is about 15 million pounds in today's money. But critically, they held on to their plantation and they held on to the workers who were emancipated. The workers who were emancipated were trapped on that plantation. They and their children and their children and their children and their children and their children, and their children up to today 
180 years later. So you need to capture the full enormity of this crime. Now, when you reduce it to a matter of, well, this is what the plantation is worth, this is how much money they have made, it is a much more criminal history than that, my friend. And you're whitewashing it. I do understand that point very keenly. And, and you've, I'm you've happy that you do. I'm happy that you do. Express that very, very eloquently. I guess the only reason yeah. that, that I even raise the economics is, that I guess there has to be some consequence, is, is my point. Uh, to, so everything you've said has to lead to some consequence. And I guess the question is, bearing in mind that enormity, bearing in mind the genocide which you've described, what can, con what can there be in terms of a consequence? The people of the Caribbean want to move on. But you cannot move on without reconciliation. Yeah. The people of the Caribbean went into independence. They all asked the British government for a golden handshake, a development support to launch them into independence nation building. The British government, dominated by people like the Drax, continue to have this harsh this harsh and unrepentant attitude to the Caribbean. And it's embedded in the racism in British politics that they cannot look beyond the endemic institutional racism and see that the damage they have done is so complicated that the only way to reconcile it is to sit around the table, talk about it and find a way to move forward. Now, what does that entail? Well, first of all, people who are the beneficiaries of criminal enrichment. If you today, if you are accused and found, and found guilty of having wealth uh, accumulated from drug and narcotic trafficking, the state has the power to compensate your wealth. And even if you pass it to your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren, once it's established that this is criminal enrichment, legislation provides for that. Now, why is it that the same standard cannot be held in respect of chattel slavery? Because when Mr. Drax made his statement uh, uh, last week, uh, or on the weekend, whenever it was, in which he said, it was a long time ago, I cannot be held accountable for what my ancestor did a hundred years ago. It is not hundreds of years ago, it is today. It started hundreds of years ago, it accelerated, it intensified, it reached a crescendo today. So it is today that we are speaking about the legacies of the crime that continue to harm the people of that poor island called Barbados and that plantation called the Drax Plantation, which we all know is a cemetery. We all know that because over 30,000 Africans would have died at the hands of the Drax family over these years. You do not take 30,000 people who have slaved and died, their children, uh, over generations after generations today. And the people on that plantation are feeling the horror of what has happened to them. And you know, on top of that, there's no apology. I mean, CARICOM reparations have said, let us begin with an apology. You cannot conduct that criminal enterprise for all of this time, leaving people trapped in the poverty of plantation degradation. You don't apologize to anyone. And an apology simply means we know that this behavior is criminal. And it's not just, as I say, the slavery part of it. It's the post-slavery part of it as well. It's the post-independence part of it. It is the entire shebang. And he is sitting on top of this mountain, this mountain of criminal enrichment. He is sitting on the end of it, on top of it. And he's looking down and he's looking back and he's looking forward and he sees nothing wrong. Nothing is wrong with any of this. I believe first of all, that he should, he should begin the process by handing over that estate and that, and that great house mansion that is on it. It is over 400 years. It is one of the oldest plantation management in the Western Hemisphere. But he holds on to it 
he doesn't allow the government to use it as a tourism attraction where the government can get some revenue over using as a historic site as many of the British castles have been handed over to the National Trust for purposes of tourism. That plantation mansion is the primary building on the island and should be a part of the National Trust. He should hand over the estate. The estate can then be used either for small farmer development where the descendants of his enslaved people who are still working there today, maybe they can convert it into a cooperative where the workers can run it if they want to run it or if they want to subdivide it into small farms to do alternative agriculture. But those are the actions that should happen. And simply because people like Drax and his political friends and the British government have a way of intimidating small Caribbean islands, that small Caribbean islands do not nationalize these projects because let's face it, we do not want to have a discourse in the Caribbean that we are appropriating people's private property. That's not the conversation we want to have in the Caribbean. Yeah. But this is a crime and it's a moral crisis. Mm. 